hello stigmas in the mechanics that we have discussed so far we have only looked into the translational motion of the body by translational motion i mean how these uh, bodies behave when they move in straight lines that is the dynamics of these bodies when they move in straight lines but we have certainly not looked into the dynamics of uh, bodies when they move in a circle or that is when they rotate or revolve about some axis we did look into the kinematics of uh, point particles uh, when they move in a circle or when they rotate about some axis uh, in our discussion of uh, polar coordinates but we certainly did not look into the dynamics of such particles or for instance the dynamics of uh, rotating or revolving extended bodies for example what would be the dynamics of a rotating sphere or a rotating cone or a rotating cube how would these uh, bodies uh, behave under rotation under translation we never looked into that and that is exactly what we are going to do now we are going to look into the dynamics of uh, rotating or uh, revolving uh, bodies uh, in general we are going to look into extended bodies but before we look into the dynamics of a rotating or a revolving extended bodies we first follow the same tradition that we have been following from the beginning of this playlist that is we are going to first look into the dynamics of a rotating point particle and then we are going to extend the idea to extended bodies so let us begin with a drawing a coordinate system our favorite coordinate system the cartesian coordinate system and let us consider a particle that is uh, present in this uh, cartesian coordinate system obviously this uh, particle is going to have a, a position vector let us say this is the position vector r of the particle and let us say it has a velocity in some uh, random direction let us say that uh, this is the direction or the velocity of the particle then we can define a quantity known as the angular momentum of that particle about the origin of this uh, coordinate system that is we can define the angular momentum about this uh, origin of the coordinate system let us say this coordinate system is some s coordinate system then the angular momentum of the particle about the origin of this coordinate system would be defined by or first let us denote it with the letter l and then define it as the position vector of the particle and its cross product with the linear momentum of the particle obviously if this uh, particle has a mass m then it will have some linear momentum p and then so what we can do is we can define this quantity angular momentum as r cross p the cross product of the position vector with the linear momentum now a very interesting thing that you can notice about this uh, angular momentum thing is that it depends upon the position vector yes i know you already know that but something that you again already know is that position vector is a pseudo vector that is it depends upon our choice of the coordinate system for instance uh, let me draw another coordinate system over here right and call it the s prime coordinate system then the position vector of uh, the same mass the same particle with respect to the s prime coordinate system would be given by this vector right if that is r then this is r prime okay and obviously r is not equal to r prime and hence the angular momentum of the particle with respect to the new coordinate system or with respect to the origin the origin will be present over here so the angular momentum of the particle with respect to the origin of the new coordinate system would be equal to r prime cross p and it would be completely different to angular momentum and hence you can see that angular momentum which depends upon a pseudo vector which is the position vector itself is a pseudo vector it depends upon our choice of coordinate system or our choice of the origin 
Now, since we have defined what angular momentum is, let us try to get a geometrical intuition as to what angular momentum means in our everyday life. For that, uh, uh, let us again draw our Cartesian coordinate system. And uh, let us consider a particle in that Cartesian coordinate system, which uh, has a position vector, right? Let's say it has a position vector r and uh, a velocity in some uh, random direction again or let us uh, consider directly the momentum since we'll be using the momentum of uh, the particle in the expression for angular momentum so consider it has a momentum in that random direction then if uh, p and r make some angle right p and r let us say i what before we understand what angle they make First, to consider the idea that r cap or the uh, unit vector or along r is going to point in this direction. This is going to be r cap, and hence uh, the direction with which r makes with p is obviously the direction which r cap makes with p, or the angle which r makes with p is equal to the angle which r cap makes with p. And hence, uh, if r cap makes a uh, angle, let us say theta with p, then what I can do is I can take the components of r along p and a component of r perpendicular to the p, which is kind of like a forming a new coordinate system, right? So what I can do is I can uh, define r as a component that is parallel to p plus a component that is perpendicular to p right r parallel is a parallel to p and uh, r perpendicular is perpendicular to p and hence uh, from our definition of angular momentum you can see that i can write angular momentum L as a R parallel plus R perpendicular cross product with a P. And if that is the case, you can see that the cross product of uh, R parallel with P is going to be zero because they point in the same direction. And you know that cross product uh, has the, the term sine theta and hence if theta is zero, that is it for two parallel vectors or anti-parallel vectors, the cross product is going to be zero. And hence we'll be left with our perpendicular cross p. Now, if we only consider the magnitude of uh, the angular momentum, then you can see that our perpendicular and p they are obviously perpendicular, so the angle is 90 and sine 90 is 1. So all you'll be left with is the magnitude of our perpendicular times the magnitude of the momentum. And what is the magnitude of our perpendicular? Our perpendicular, as you can see, is going to be our sine theta. That is the angle which uh, R makes to P and hence R perpendicular, that is the component perpendicular to the P, is uh, always uh, going to be equal to R sine theta than P. And another thing that you can notice is that the component of P perpendicular to the R is going to be P sine theta. So what you can do is you can combine these two terms and what you can write it as is uh, R into P perpendicular, that is component of P perpendicular to R. So this is uh, what uh, it means to have uh, angular momentum geometrically. And uh, now since we understand it geometrically, we can also have uh, an algebraic expression for angular momentum, which is very simple. It is just the definition of uh, any cross product between any two vectors. That is angular momentum is just going to be equal to the determinant of the components of R and P. It is going to be this. Now, in this chapter, we are only going to be concerned with fixed axis rotation. So, let me quickly write our next topic, which is fixed axis rotation. And if you're wondering what I mean by fixed axis rotation, you need to understand that uh, objects are going to rotate about some axis. And if the direction of that axis is uh, fixed, then it is known as fixed axis rotation. So what is fixed axis rotation is that the direction of the axis of rotation
is fixed. That is, uh, if uh, this is the axis of rotation, let me quickly draw uh, axis of rotation. And uh, there is somebody, let's say a sphere that is uh, rotating like this about uh, this axis of rotation with uh, angular velocity omega. Or we can have, uh, let's say, a particle that is uh, rotating that has a velocity v. And it is uh, rotating about this axis with a velocity v or angular velocity omega, then this axis is going to be fixed in direction. It is not going to change in direction. It can translate although that is this axis can move from over here to let's say over here. The axis was initially here and has moved over there. So that is a possible. The axis can translate but it cannot change direction. For example, the axis suddenly becomes like this that is not allowed that is not allowed in fixed axis rotation and the reason why we are considering fixed axis rotation is because if we do not consider fixed axis rotation then our equations can become pretty much complicated and since uh, this course is uh, only for high school students that's why i will not uh, try to get very complicated first we are going to look into fixed axis rotation which is uh, very simple and as you move to undergraduate and i'm going to release a mechanics video series for undergraduate student there we are going to discuss uh, rotations where the axis is not not fixed so the axis can rotate the axis itself can change direction also along with fixed axis we are going to consider rigid bodies By rigid bodies, I mean that the distance between the various particles of the bodies does not change. So the distance between various particles is fixed. This is again so that our equations are not very complicated. We want to keep our equations as simple as possible for now. And later we can generalize to bodies that are not rigid maybe. And hence if we have a rigid body that is rotating about some axis. Let me draw an axis. Okay. And let us consider a rigid body that rotates about this axis. Let us say we have a sphere. And this axis passes through the diameter of the sphere and the sphere is uh, rotating right the sphere is uh, rotating with some angular velocity omega about this axis then you can see that each particle is going to remain at a fixed distance uh, from this uh, axis otherwise it is not a rigid body right if it's a distance from the axis changes that it's a distance from each other also changes and hence uh, it has to remain at a fixed distance uh, from the axis of a rotation let us now consider a single particle of this sphere okay we are first going to look into only a single particle of this sphere so let us draw our uh, axis of rotation again and now Consider some jth particle, right? This is, let's say, the jth particle of the sphere. So I'm going to show you the motion of the jth particle of the sphere. It is, let's say, it is going to rotate about this uh, axis in a circle. It is going to rotate about that axis in a circle. And uh, let us say that it's it is present over here. Let me use another color. Let us say it is present over here and has a velocity v. And let us consider our origin to be present at the fixed axis. Let us consider our origin to be over here. Okay, then we can draw the position vector of that particle in this manner. R. Let us consider the uh, perpendicular and parallel components of the position vector. In fact, we will need only the perpendicular component, the component that is perpendicular to the fixed axis. So let us consider the component of R that is uh, perpendicular to the fixed axis. Let us call the magnitude of R as rho. Then we can uh, call the that perpendicular component of a rho of the j particle as rho j. Okay, then from our discussion of polar coordinates, you know that V 
the magnitude of v or in fact the entire vector let us write the whole vector v is uh, going to be equal to r dot r cap plus r theta dot theta cap this was the expression that we found for v in our discussion of uh, polar coordinates and if that is the case here you can see that r is fixed as i told you the distance of each particle from the axis of rotation is fixed and hence r dot is going to be zero so the magnitude of v is going to be equal to r into theta dot or if it has some angular velocity let's say omega then it is going to be equal to rho j into omega fine this is going to be the velocity of the jth particle let me quickly put it in the box and now since we know the velocity we can write the expression for angular momentum the angular momentum is going to be equal to or the magnitude of the angular momentum is going to be obviously equal to mjvj that is the momentum of the jet particle into the perpendicular distance from the axis as we have seen here we have just discussed it is going to be this momentum times the its perpendicular distance from the axis and here the perpendicular distance from the axis as we said is rho j so it is going to be mj vj into rho j and when you substitute vj from here to here then what we will get is mj vj is going to be omega into rho j so you are going to get rho j squared omega this is going to be the angular momentum of the jth particle and omega is going to be the same for all the particles because again if you consider over here that the omega or the angular velocity of each particle is different then again they will appear to move away from each other and hence the shape of the body is going to change but that is exactly what we mean by rigid bodies the distance between the particles is fixed or you can say that the shape is fixed but that is not going to be the case if each particle has different angular velocity and hence each particle is actually going to have the same angular velocity in a rigid body and hence the total angular momentum if we want the total angular momentum of that rigid body it is obviously going to be only the sum of the individual angular momenta and if that is the case then it is going to be summation mj rho j squared into omega and this is exactly how we can find the angular momentum of a extended body we first find the angular momenta of the individual particles of that body and then add them up to get the total angular momentum and that was all about angular momentum if you like this video then do not forget to subscribe to my channel and give that thumbs up i will see you in the next video with more such interesting concepts of rotational mechanics thank you for watching